This trope is one that still confuses me, but I think if we look into it, we could probably find some interesting themes in human behavior. To lay it out, the punching bag character is a common trope in which one individual character is the butt of most jokes, painted as the odd man out, and is generally a pitiful person. While it has always been a common gag and most viewers are aware of it, it wasn't until I was watching the scene in Dairy Girls where everyone shames Jerry for asking for tea that I wondered why on earth this trope is so prevalent. I mean, other character tropes I get. Redemption arcs, love triangles, power of friendship, found family. I get them. They all serve the plot or send messages to the audience. But what purpose does every member of the horde ripping on Kyle serve the plot? What lesson does this teach, especially in a show about friendship? For some shows, I think it's a cheap shot at humor. In shows like South Park and Family Guy, the humor is lowbrow, and therefore the concept of characters being overtly mean in order to grab laughs doesn't come as much a surprise. Like I said, it's the fact this trope is common even within shows about friendship and bettering oneself that confuses me. Then a thought came to mind. What if this trope is grounded in similar concepts to social circles? having the viewer project onto the in-group of the show and therefore feel included and more invested. What I mean is that maybe we're meant to make self-inserts of the show's majority. Let's take community. No one is supposed to relate to Pierce past shallow aspects. At least, I hope no one relates to him. This makes the jokes that come at his expense harmless to the viewer. It makes them feel safe and included in pointing the finger, and we're allowed to laugh at him because out of all of the characters, he's the one who changes the least. So then is this some sort of neoliberal method of viewers patting ourselves on the back for being able to laugh at the racist, sexist, homophobic character? In cases like Community, yeah, I think this might be part of it. But I think this is an outlier in terms of why we have punching bag characters. Sure, some shows make the punching bag characters objectively bad people, or they make the punching bag characters have a great life outside of the main plot, their great lives meant to make us feel less guilty about laughing at their expense for no apparent reason. But what's most common is the Meg. Even though I've never been much of a Family Guy fan, most cartoon lovers know of the Meg character, which is essentially the Q-tip to the cotton swab that is the punching bag character. Characters like Toby, characters like Kyle, characters like Hootie, characters who seem objectively harmless and appear to have been made the butt of the joke for no good reason. I wanted to know what other purpose this character trope could serve, so I did what any curious babe could do. I watched a few TED Talks, listened to a few panels, skimmed a few articles. I'm not great at narrowing down my searches, so I ended up learning a lot of irrelevant information for this topic, but one YouTube video I found was particularly helpful. Andy Luttrell's The Psychological Effects of Feeling Excluded. He talks about how studies on social exclusion demonstrate that after an individual gets a taste of exclusion, they work harder to maintain social relations. I think this can answer our question as to why punching bag characters exist in cartoons and shows about the power of friendship, a place you'd least expect to find them. If you know how exclusion feels, you fight to maintain inclusion. If you see how the lack of friendship looks, you're bound to notice its presence everywhere else. Even if it's subtle, seeing how the residents of the Owl House pick on Hootie establishes their friendship more. Seeing everyone make fun of Jerry and Parks and Rec makes the viewer consider the bond between the others as friendship with far less effort on behalf of the show. I think this also solidifies my earlier point. The viewers are meant to impose themselves onto the majority of the show's characters. We're meant to identify with the characters that all, to some extent, get along. I researched shared identities, which is a humongous field of research that I barely dip my pinky toe into, but I think it's relevant as well. It's so much easier to view ourselves as part of the in-group if there is someone who is noticeably outside of the circle. It only makes the circle we're a part of feel more exclusive, but with us on the inside. And isn't it a part of human nature to crave feeling included, feeling like a part of something bigger? If this is true, we can take this whole look into punching bag characters to the other side of our screens. Unsurprisingly, a lot of TED Talks when you look into exclusion and social circles center social media and its negative impacts on society, particularly society's youth. Social media has created bubbles, echo chambers, in-groups, etc. Naturally, they mirror real-world social circles as well. And yes, we can make social media and its effects on society about cartoons. I mean, Shira's fandom is practically a club for the cartoon-loving LGBTQ plus community. The fandom social circles parallel real-world social circles. Part of the reason that viewers tend to build parts of their personality around shows is because it makes them feel included in something bigger. Naturally, people are part of communities and identities beyond shows, in a larger, more important, and more tangible sense. But an individual can never be a part of too many communities. Community cements social connections. I mean, the show Community is really focusing in on this one, in an ironic way. And when you're in a group, part of the fun is that there are people on the outside of it. The term local cements how common it is to discuss outsiders of whatever group you're in. 
Even growing up, the number of memes I saw making fun of people who immediately thought of this movie whenever you said Avatar instead of this show, well, it was excessive. I'd also place a bet that ideas of inclusion in social bubbles is a huge reason why people wear fandom merch. We want people to know what fandoms, what social circles we're in, in the hope that they too are in on it. And this can be kind of fun. If you're in a supermarket and someone compliments your Kotsky sweatshirt, you suddenly have a common ground that connects you, physical proof that you are both within a circle that everyone else in the grocery store is outside of. Punching bag characters assure that, even within a show, there is always an outsider, always an outside, always at least one individual that you are able to point to as the other, able to assure you are viewing the show through the lens of a primary social circle, the majority. Sure, I'm reading way too hard into this one for no godforsaken reason, but I have a literature degree and spent four years doing this for passing grades. It's deep, deep inside of me now. Punching bag characters are the embodiment, the personification of exclusion. And while I'm still confused as to why they exist, I get the idea that there is a plethora of reasons. Cheap jokes at their expense, demonstrating what traits are bad and making us feel better about ourselves for being able to say yes, these traits are bad, making us more easily notice the friendship between other characters, making us feel as though we are viewing the show through the perspective of an inner circle. I still don't feel anywhere close to having the answer to this one, and it's a trope that will likely always puzzle me, so please help.